Hey guys, this is your friend Manak from Civil Center, and I welcome all of you back to our channel and another video on beams. So, friends, in the previous videos, we had shown what is extra reinforcement, how it is provided at the site, and if you want, then you can check out the link of that particular video in the description. So we'll provide that, and in today's video, we'll show how to calculate or how to provide how to know how many extra reinforcement we need to provide after you perform the structural design in any software like regular structural designer or stat pro e taps how do we provide decide which number of bars we can provide for extra reinforcement and how many number of bars you can provide for all three reinforcement so before that let's understand the structural drawing so here you have this beams and this is the this particular end is the discontinuous end and this end is the continuous end so there are two ends of this particular beam here and now if you just take the structural drawing this has three bars of 20 mm also at the top as you can see here in this section and an extra reinforcement of two bars of 16 mm that also you can check from here so extra reinforcement of of two bar of 16 mm and also reinforcement of three bars of 20 mm after that, you can check that at the bottom, there is all three reinforcement of two bars of 20 mm and extra reinforcement of two bars of 16 mm, which is at the center that is uh, leaving a space of 0.15 L and 0.25 L from this side, from the discontinuous side and continuous side respectively. So it is placed along here. So as you can see, if you cut a section in the middle, it will be visible here, two bars of 16 mm. And the extra reinforcement on the top we start from here to here. Sorry, more to be more precise, here to here. And for the continuous end, it will start from here to here. So it will continue up to the same length in that part also. So this is the extra reinforcement at the top, that is two bars of 16 mm here and here, and two bars of 16 mm extra, it is here. So now why is this arrangement provided? So if you just observe the Bending moment diagram of a beam subjected to UDL, it is the shape of the bending moment diagram is like this. We're not going in the values here, but as you can see, the maximum value for the tension is at the center and in the compression zone, the maximum value is near the ends. But as you know, any structural design software or even if you design manually, it takes the maximum value. So it will take the maximum value of compression and then design the beams and same it will take the maximum value of the tension and then design the design for the reinforcement at the bottom. But do we really need this particular max reinforcement apart from this zone? Suppose we have we, we need the maximum reinforcement uh, which is calculated by the software in this zone definitely for the tension zone but we don't need in this zone. So that's why we are avoiding this. Now before that another question arises that why are you providing all through bars anyway because in any beam we need to provide four minimum number of bars that is two bars at the top and the two bars at the bottom so this is the minimum number of bars which you need to provide and in addition if any extra reinforcement are required then those we can provide as extra reinforcement we don't need to provide as also so if the reinforcement is at the bottom then we provide the extra reinforcement at the center and if the reinforcement is at the top then we provide the extra reinforcement at the near the ends or near the supports the lengths also you can see from this and this is a pre-specified length so let's sync with this idea with the help of an example so suppose you are designing a beam and uh, in stat pro in or in tecla structural design and ETAPs, which whichever software so getting the HT required for a particular beam. So if we design by stat pro, they will give a particular beam size. So suppose it is telling you four bars, four ten t for a particular beam at the top. So then what you need to do, you need to convert this four ten t into HT. So if we calculate pi by four into ten square you will get the cross sectional area of your 10 mm diameter. So if you approximate that, take a little bit less value and round it, you will get 78.5 is a cross sectional area of 4 10 mm bars. So we will just multiply that and you will find the result 
which will be equals to 314 mm square. And now, if we are to provide the same reinforcement, then we can provide two bars of 10 mm as all through. Just write 210T all through and after the comma, two bars of 10 mm as extra. If you want to denote this properly, you can just denote this with EXT. And here you can denote this with the help of ALTH. So like this, you can help with the denotations. Now if we want to convert this particular reinforcement, suppose I want to give the same reinforcement with the help of 12 mm bars. So what I'll do is I'll go with, let's say the cross-sectional area of 12 mm bars is 113. So we'll go with, let's check what is 3 into 113. It is equals to, it will be equals to 339. So we can provide two bars of 12 mm reinforcement as all through and one bar of 12 mm reinforcement as extra. So like this, we can provide the reinforcement. So similarly, it can be done for the top as well as the bottom reinforcement as well. So to sum up, the software calculates the age required based on the maximum tension and maximum tension for the bottom and maximum tension for the top, maximum compression for the top. So in case of both the cases, we are designing for the maximum moments, which are at specified location. And we know that maximum tension in the bottom fiber is at the center and maximum compression that is at the top fiber is near the ends. So we have a pre-specified length in which the maximum tension and maximum compression acts. So along particular length, along that particular length, we can provide the extra reinforcement at the ends for in case of the compression and at the center in case of the tension. But anyway, we need to provide minimum of two bars at the top and two bars at the bottom to maintain the continuity of the columns. Any extra reinforcement coming other than two can be provided only at the zones where the tension or compression is maximum and up to the specified lengths. So hope in this video, you got your concept behind providing the extra reinforcement cleared. So the another question may arise, so why do you provide this extra reinforcement if we can provide it also? So if you can provide it also, there will be no loss, only the economy of the project will be hampered because reinforcement is one of the costliest materials which you'll use in a building or any construction project. So as a structural engineer, it's your responsibility to reduce the cost of the project also. Also keeping in mind that your project or the building or the structure is safe, safe and economical. That's the responsibility of the structural engineers. And that's why we are studying structural engineering. And that's why we manipulate or rather interpolate the results of the software so that we can find a safe and economical design. So friends, that's all for today. See you in the next video. And if you love this video, do share with us friends. And if you're bumping into our channel for the first time, do subscribe and also comment because through your comments only, we get to know how did you find this video and which more topics you are interested in. Bye-bye. See you. Keep learning.